Hello and welcome to another edition of BuzzFeed Unsolved Postmortem, a show where we answer your most pressing questions about the most recent episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved, which was the Alcatraz prison break. I, I think that's what we could call that, right? Alcatraz prison break. That's what it was, yeah. All the questions we're answering today came from you guys via our BuzzFeed Unsolved Facebook page and our BuzzFeed Unsolved Instagram page, as well as the comment section of the last YouTube, uh, the, the, the video. Yeah, on YouTube. The new network, BuzzFeed YouTube, Unsolved YouTube, Network. BuzzFeed Unsolved Network. God, I feel like we're nailing this right now. It's a good one. <laughs> I feel like we're nailing it. This is the best it. app yet. Do you feel that? Let's go, Graham Down. Uh, here's from Sidekicks Spam. Postmortem, not really a question, but I found it very funny that when the guard reached into the cell to wake up the guy, to wake up the guy and the head rolled off the bed, he says in sarcastic tone, knew something was wrong. That is very funny. <laughs> that, he, <laughs> that he went to wake him up and the head rolled off and he thought, something's wrong. <laughs> I think that's what they're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he knew something. What an astute guard. I wonder if he saw, he was like, God damn it, this is what I think it is. Yeah, okay. Uh, like, I looked at the head, it's good craftsmanship, but I think from like, It's very impressive. From like, you know, if he was across the room, if I was staring at it from like maybe to that wall right there, which is about five feet away, I could probably tell it was a fake head. Do you think he was very devastated too? It's sort of, it's probably hurt his pride a little bit as a guard to be fooled by such a cartoonish ruse. To be honest, I don't think he really cared that much. You don't think so? I don't think he lost any sleep over it. He's probably like, yeah, whatever. I guess you wouldn't give a shit because you figure... How much are prison guards making an hour? Probably like... On the rock, though? On the rock? Well, that you place was... take a little boat and everything. That place was pretty cushy. Yeah. They let them play instruments. Uh, he let them have the, a, a little secret fort area. But even if I did, if I were the guard and I realized they had escaped the cell, I wouldn't have been like, oh no! Because I'd be like, what are they going to do? Build a... Build a boat out of raincoats? <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, do you think was, he said that aloud? Oh, well, well, what are they gonna do? Build a boat out of raincoats? Uh, what if a, another guard found them first and was like, mm, I'll pretend like I didn't see this. It was and like when I was like, at when I was working at the movie theater. Have I told this story before? And I went to clean a bathroom oh, that no. wasn't under my jurisdiction. I just thought I'd pop in, clean it up, and uh, someone had taken a juicy turd in a in their underpants and just. Oh, in their pants. Okay, I thought it was going to be in the toilet. No, I just, uh, I opened up a stall and uh, there was just wrapped in some tidy whities like a little child was a turd. Someone had turded in their pants, <laughs> taken off their underpants, <laughs> wrapped up their little poo baby and set it against the wall like it was taking a rest. And I just saw it and I was like, well, I walked in here to clean this, but I'm just, there's no one here, so I'm just gonna back out slowly <laughs> and walk to a different part of the theater and leave it for someone else. Just like that, I think that's what maybe a guard did here. <laughs> yeah. They walked in, they saw that fake head, and they're like, God damn it. That's well, a fake head. Well, you pretend like I wasn't here. What's, what's for lunch? <laughs> uh, this comes from Facebook from Lauren Smith. My theory is that they left their belongings in the water to make the authorities think they had perished in the water. If they were smart, they memorized the numbers in the bags to dispose of in the water so that they could call whoever they needed, like their father, to avoid being suspected on the mainland. Super, super big fans of your show, by the way. Hashtag Team Bugara all the way. Super psyched to hear from you guys. Okay, uh, good stuff. Actually, I like this theory quite a bit. Basically, yeah, they, ab sense. they abandoned all their items as a ruse to try and make people think they died. Uh, frankly, I don't understand why the belong. I guess, yeah, if you made it seem like... Uh, you crashed, right? But why, yeah, why would you need to write down the numbers? How hard is it to remember a phone number? Well, one of the things that they found uh, that they considered irrefutable proof that the, the, that the belongings were from the inmates was that they had the list of names that was, you know, uh, relatives that they were going to contact on the mainland. Yeah, just find a phone book. No, but I'm saying they wrote that down as like fake Oh, to evidence. be like, this is definitely this, us. This is definitely yeah, us. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Here's, like, here's all the people that I It doesn't make sense that they would need to do that. Well, they did it. So the only reason I could see them doing that, like as they're positing, is just to make authorities go, yeah, that's definitely them. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't posit that in the episode though. Did we not? We didn't. Hmm. It's a good, it's a good, that's a good thought. You're using your noggin. Because if you Warren remember, Smith. the boat was never found. That's right. So. They probably used the boat to get to shore, and then they were like, let's toss some shit overboard. Yeah, so I'd be think, like, here's my watch. Yeah. Take out a tooth. And, and that, way the, that way authorities will think we're all a bunch of sea raisins. Yeah, sea raisins. Yeah. All right, uh, what are we going to here? Oh, uh, what, 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 Graham Town? From No It's Nat. For postmortem, if y'all had a prison, what would you allow during happy hour? Love y'all, hashtag Shaniac. 
And then a little martini emoji. If I had a prison, so I'm the warden in this scenario. Yep, it's your prison. What would I You make to... the rules. I don't think It's there happy would... hour. There would be no happy hour. No? No happy hour. Every hour is sad hour. I mean, they're people. Absolute quiet. They're people, Ryan. Not anymore. Well, I'm gonna, well, come on down to my prison <laughs> because we're gonna have a lot of fun. We're gonna have Scrabble and popcorn. I, mean, I gotta start committing some crimes to get into that. Yeah, it sounds fun, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And I'll I'll pop it myself on my little whirly pop. I'll go. I'll start popping it, and everyone will be like, "Huh?" And then I'll hit the button. All the cell doors yeah. will open. And it'll come <laughs> oh, great! Yeah, up. yeah. So it's, your prison, it's popping time. Your prison more is more like the one from Paddington too. A little like bit. Yeah, prison. yeah, 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 yeah. You don't want to have a little popcorn prison time. Your prison sounds pretty fun, but mine no. Absolute silence. That's unbelievable. Absolute side. That may be inhumane, actually. I hope so. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe I'll let them have some fun. I don't know. In what way? Dream boards or vision dream, boards? No, dream right? boards isn't good. Maybe they could, uh... Movie night? 30 minutes of Netflix a day. I don't know. 30 minutes of Netflix. Okay. They'd have one big Netflix account where the login page would have 10,000 different profiles. You'd have to find your profile by the time you found it. In what 30 are, minutes would probably be up. What about, like, a nice craft station? Sure, that sounds good too. I've never had any aspirations to own or operate a prison, so it's like not something I usually think about. But well, now's the time to think about it. Well, that's because true. someone asked us to think about it. I just thought that's about what it. we're here for. I right? just I just thought about it, and I thought maybe a Netflix account that was joint between the thousands Everyone. of inmates, or how about uh, I don't know. Yeah, uh, here we go. Here we go. Uh, yeah, keep going. Uh, keep going. They could whittle. I don't they know. They could like whittle. You're, you're, you're gonna give them knives? Is that what you're gonna do? Because that's not good. Yeah, that'd be fun. Throw a little in the mix. You're, so you, you're gonna issue knives to every prisoner yeah. and yeah. say, now these are only for whittling. These are only for whittling and basket weaving, and then I'm gonna open the doors and see what happens. And then you take them outside for some target practice with some rifles. Exactly, yeah. Now these... <laughs> now these are just for the clay pigeons. This is just so you could practice firing off into the sky for funerals. That's it. It's only for the sound. So, anyways, you're free. This is from YouTube. This comes from Louisa G2. Louisa G, if you were in Alcatraz, would you want to escape? <laughs> and if so, how would you do it? Yeah, I think I'd want to escape. I don't think I would. It sounds nice. Yeah, I mean, this did sound like a pretty cool. People pay a lot of money to go there cozy nowadays. Prison. Yeah, I actually was in San Francisco this past weekend. I thought about going to Alcatraz, but it was a little too pricey yeah, for me. Yeah, last time I was there, I was like, oh, I got to go to the Rock. You got to like schedule a tour, pay a bunch of money. Yeah. These guys got to stay there for free. Also, I was like on vacation. I didn't really want to spend one of my like off days going to a prison, a dirty, dusty place when that's what I do when I'm at work. That's true. I think I've seen enough prisons. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I'd chill. I just chill. It seems like the guards were kind of nice. I'd probably get a good, a good uh, uh, rapport going with them. Just hang out. They, they seem pretty. You're treating it like it's a dorm. Like you're like, yeah, it's pretty sweet. They seem pretty accommodating. You'd be like, oh, can you move me over here? Give me some more raincoats and pillows. And they'd be like, sure, yeah. It'd be a cozy little place. I, I mean, guess you could sell that. I'd be like, what's Shane up to? Oh, he's actually doing pretty well. He's got like a one bedroom, one bath in San Francisco. It's tough to live up yeah, there. Yeah, that normally runs you like thirty five hundred dollars a month. I'm sweet sure. ocean views. Yeah. This is from YouTube. Destiny Dustin, for postmortem, if the scientist got pretty close to Golden Gate Bridge in similar conditions, don't you think that the, the, the don't you think that the escapees could have got as close as they could in the raft before it sank and swam the rest away to shore? If the raft sank, then they would have lost their personal belongings that were found. So they're saying that they didn't do the toss the shit over the side as a ruse. They said that they actually the raft sunk because it was you know made of raincoats. Yeah, and yeah, I think they could have swam the rest of the way. Yeah, I mean, if I mean, if these nerdy ass scientists can do it, I saw some people. They were tweeting. They were like, "Not all scientists are nerds." Uh, yeah, they are. <laughs> <laughs> I need to see a picture of these scientists. Yeah. So like, show like, me your hunky scientists that exist outside of CBS. Wouldn't that be just a hilarious side effect of this show? If the, from now on, people just start tweeting pictures of us of scientists that are like fucking jacked. Yeah. Like just rips. Like I'm a scientist. You think I couldn't make it past shore? And he's like flexing. Yeah. No, I don't think you could have. Even if you got muscles, you're still a dork. Cause you're still a dork on the inside. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. I love DNA and RNA. Well, you've never heard of that <laughs> other one? It's different. Pick those weights up, put them back down as much as you like. Ain't gonna cover the fact that you're a nerd. Yeah. Well, most of those muscles are probably from lugging all your stupid you textbooks books. Books around. Whoa. <laughs> oh, don't book me. He's doing 300-page curls. <laughs> 
Yeah, look at that. You get real buff. <laughs> Intellectual yeah. curiosity is important, and you should. Uh, <laughs> you should really uh, yeah, try to consume yeah. uh, knowledge voraciously, but also scientists are fucking dorks. We should start that hashtag ripped scientists. Ripped scientists. And just. People will never figure out it traces back to us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get that trending. Get ripped, it trending. Ripped scientists to, to, to prove us wrong. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I think they would have made it. I think they were fighting for their life, a lot of adrenaline, a whole lot of I don't want to die going on in their head. Better paddle quickly. You know, that's what I would think. Yeah. That does it for this episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved Postmortem. Make sure you watch the new episode this Friday and send in your questions to uh, the aforementioned social accounts on Facebook and Instagram and, uh, Oh, and also on the video, comment directly on the video. And, and subscribe and, to BuzzFeed Unsolved Network. Yeah, and maybe next time you'll be featured on the next postmortem. And thanks for watching. We hit, There's a million subscribers now. That's good. Oh, we didn't mention yeah, that. We, yeah, that's exciting. Yeah, it is exciting. It's very exciting. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you all for everyone who subscribed. We hit a million this past weekend, which is amazing. By next week, let's hit three. Have we talked about Midsummer Scream yet? Oh, we were at Midsummer Scream. It was very fun. Thanks to everyone who came out. Here's a photo from it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was good. It was good. Yeah, thank you everybody who came out to Midsummer Scream. That was a good turnout. Uh, also, thank you for all the, the pieces of art and gifts that we got there. I have a whole bag of them. I'm gonna probably post those on my Instagram because there's some good stuff in there. There's some really good stuff. I got a Paddington bear. I got a beautiful drawing of Dan, the hot dog. Okay. Is that, that's it for the show, that's right? That's it for the show. Our weekly Q&A concluded. I now welcome you to the part of the show we call the Hot Dog. The Hot Dog Saga, commissioned by Ryan Steven Bergara, written by me and adored by every single viewer. And if you don't like it, you can kiss my apple taters deep in the bowels of the Onion Station Space Buffet Luxury Resort. Two sliders commiserate in the canteen. Oh, hey, Christopher. Long time no see. Oh, whoa, Alice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they had me up on the Lido deck. Lifeguard duty. <laughs> Not what I signed up for, but somebody's got to keep an eye on those pickles. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. Uh, anyway, I, uh... <laughs> I put in for a transfer off station, but I just ended up here in the process, in processing and admissions. I'm ashamed but, I chuckled at that. You yeah. know, like the song says, sometimes your life don't go exactly how you planned. Uh, true. Well, glad to have you aboard. I, um, I really miss seeing you around. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I missed you too. The air feels heavy. Oh, oh, actually, um, are you about to eat or... Oh no, I just finished. Why? Oh, well, I could use a hand interrogating some new arrivals. A little suspicious. We found them trying to sneak in through the cargo delivery bay. Said they got turned around and lost their reservation passes in a wormhole. I'm not too worried about it. I just have to cover our bases. Oh yeah, of course. The two sliders walk next door to the temporary leisure brig, where a family is waiting. From the looks of it, a husband, a wife, and their two children. Oh, hey there, folks. Sorry to keep you waiting. Oh, heck, no worries. <laughs> I feel so darn stupid showing up at the wrong entrance and all. That's what I get for letting my husband do the driving. Oh, here we go again. So I fell asleep at the wheel and almost veered into a wormhole. Big whoop. Well, we've, we've all been there. It's a long trip after all. I'm sure you're all exhausted. I'm Alice, by the way. This is Christopher. Oh, we've just got a few quick questions before we get you all checked in, Mrs. Um, uh, Teresa Matterhorn. I'm a high-powered attorney, and I've been looking forward to this vacation all year. This is my husband, Cecil Ramon. Uh, my friends call me the Juggernaut, and our two sons, Delmar. I'm just a sweet boy, and that's it. And Smeech. Wee! Well, a lovely family. Christopher's pulling up your reservation right now. I'm so sorry for the inconvenience. In fact, to make up for all the trouble, we can offer you some vouchers for... Hey, uh, Alice? Christopher furrows his brow at his handheld tablet, then looks nervously at the Matterhorns. Hmm. Do you mind, um... Can I talk to you outside real quick? The sliders leave the holding cell. Oh God, they're gonna kill us. They know, they know. Shut up, Joblet. This was our only way into this place. Just play it cool, turdball. They're buying it. You don't think there's warrants out for our arrests? They're probably putting the pieces together right now. We gotta fess up. You squeal in your cobbler, you hear me? I'll kill you before they get a chance to slap the cuffs on us. Oh, try me, Goonus. You know we used to be friends. You were my only friend. You locked me in a mind prison, a-hole. Shh, shut up, here they come. Uh, sorry about that, folks. Just, um, uh, putting out fires all day. You know how it goes, as an attorney. Uh, sure, as an attorney. Yeah. How much longer we got? I get it. I gotta, I gotta go to the bathroom so bad. What do you got here? Oh, okay. Almost well, like anyway, here's those vouchers for free toaster tans. You weren't in our system, but I'm not too Pressure worried about it. Oh, uh, thanks. 
Well, if you head out those doors and take the elevator on the left up to the 174th floor, you should find your room. Uh, and don't forget to stop by orientation to shrink those worries. Oh, and by the way, you guys look just like those people on the news. You gotta, you gotta find a newspaper and take a photo with it or something. It's incredible. Uh, we'll do that. Thanks for uh, all your hospitality. Come on, Smeech. The family exits. Well, that was uneventful. <laughs> well, you should know by now, nothing exciting ever happens around here. Any big uh, weekend plans? Oh yeah, um, Seymour's taking me to the pasta parade. Ugh, that guy? Uh, he's a nice guy. Will Maisie and co track down Gene, Mike, and Garth? What sinister plans does the Dark Master have in store? Where's Lil Pam? All this and more next time on the Hot Daga, only on Bun. Well, I gotta go to the bathroom. I was, uh... Stop, you can't, no, nope. Can't hear you. Your mic just fucking... His mic's dead? <laughs> You've got nothing to say. <laughs> no. What? You loved the episode? It was the, the best episode yet. I, gotta, I, gotta I can't to, even I hear it. Go what? Oh, Ryan, right. that's too sweet of you. Uh, Ryan loved it. I gotta go to he loved it. Let's cut to that clip of him laughing at it again. <laughs> <laughs> See you next week, folks.